Well, good morning. Welcome to our Wednesday pre-lunch devotion time together here in our Lenten journey. This is uh, week three of our uh, time together. There's two more Wednesdays after this, and uh, we'll be into Holy Week at that point. I've got some great plans ahead for Palm Sunday and uh, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. So I hope that uh, this is all helping you in many different ways uh, along our Lenten journey. I'm Reverend Bruce McCanch. This is Burlington East Presbyterian Church's Wednesday Lenten Lunch. And uh, if you're a part of our congregation, uh, you know, if you're new to our congregation, uh, you may not be aware that this is something that we would normally be doing on uh, Wednesdays during Lent, except we'd be at our church and following this devotion time, we would go downstairs to our Douglas Hall and we'd have soup and a bun luncheon time and fellowship together. Well, we can't quite do that these days, <clears throat> but we're hoping maybe next year we'll be able to. But in the meantime, this is planned to uh, run from 1130 to about noon and hopefully right afterwards, we'll all go off and have lunch together in our own places. And it, I think what I'm hoping that this is inspiring in all of us is that even though we're apart, we're all doing the same thing at the same time, roughly, and it uh, kind of hopefully gives us a sense of unity, at least in what we're doing in our task. That's my prayer anyway. Uh, before I go any further, i just cover a few announcements about what's coming up in the next little while. As far as our services go, we have two more uh, Wednesdays here with our symbols of Lent and uh, we'll be continuing that uh, until March 24th. That's the week before Holy Week. Monday, Thursday of Holy Week is April 1st, and we'll have a joint service here on our YouTube channel with uh, Brant Hills Presbyterian Church, and uh, my good friend and colleague, uh, Reverend Curtis Bablitz, will be joining us for that service. April 2nd is our Good Friday service, also at 10.30 in the morning, and uh, my wife Donna will be joining me for that. We'll be having communion during that service as well. And then Easter Sunday morning, uh, April 4th at 10.30 as well, we'll have our great uh, Hallelujah uh, Hosanna service as Christ is risen in our celebration. So mark your calendars with those dates. There's lots of activities and things going on even though we're not physically together within our church building itself, we're together in this fashion. Well, now as we prepare to gather before God, let's just take a moment and calm our souls and spirits and minds as we come into God's presence. Let us take a moment to calm our spirits as we prepare to come before the Lord in worship. We light the Christ candle this day as a symbol of Christ's presence with us as we worship. We join together now in a call to worship. Let's just prepare our hearts for that. Lent is not a time for being miserable, but really for taking stock and resetting our aims for following Christ. Loving God and you we trust Never let us fool ourselves. Lent is an opportunity for healthy repentance, repentance for our indifference often in the face of a permeating evil in the world, a repentance for personal sins, ways we personally step away from your way of life, which we have glossed over so many times as mere foibles. According to your loving kindness, remember us, God of goodness and saving grace. Lent is also a time for joy, the exhilaration that comes from defying temptations, from turning our face to the light that shines on the narrow path of Christ Jesus, walking into adverse winds and enjoying small victories day by day. Help us to know your ways this day, O God. Teach us your paths, for you are the God of our salvation and our true happiness. Come, let us worship the Lord on this, the third week of our Lenten journey. And we're talking about the symbols of Lent, and uh, this week we're going to be talking about prayer, and Jesus is going to go off into the wilderness. We're going to read that biblical account, and uh, when uh, what we're really focusing on is his response, and it's a prayerful response, and we're going to talk about a little bit about, about prayer. But before we do any, that any further, we're going to sing our first Lenten hymn today, Far Across the Burning Desert.
we had a couple of hiccups there, I think, on our transmission, but uh, we got the gist of that beautiful Lenten hymn. Let's uh, come before God with our uh, prayer, and this will be followed by the Lord's Prayer, and the words will be on screen. Let's bow our heads. God Most High, thank you for signs of your power and grace shown to us even in the wilderness. Give us courage to stand firm in your word in every time of trial and testing that we may enter the land of your freedom and receive the salvation you so generously give. God, uh, our refuge and fortress, forgive us when we fail to trust you. We f fall to temptation. We are swayed by false words, or we speak false words of our own. We choose too often to ease and comfort ourselves over your demanding claims upon us and upon the world. Lord, in turning from you, we settle for less than the abundant generosity you intend. Forgive us, we pray. Do not let us be put to shame, O God. Hear us when we call to you and show us your salvation. And now, Lord, we unite our hearts in the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying the following, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have a beautiful piece uh, of music here that we've uh, played a while back, but we're revisiting re uh, in one sense from our choir. And uh, I Actually, you know what? I don't think we have played this particular one. I kept thinking we had, and when I looked it up this morning, I realized that we hadn't. This is called Near the Cross, and it's one that I, I think our choir has done uh, live for us a couple of times, and it's a beautiful piece. Let's, uh, let's have this uh, song uh, presented to us to encourage us as we hear our choir sing Near the Cross. Now, as we prepare to hear God's word, let's just take a moment to quiet our souls and uh, you can look up the two scriptures that we'll be reading today.
Psalm 91, Assurance of God's Protection You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge shall come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Luke chapter 4, reading verses 1 through 13, 40 days in the wilderness. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This then is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I pray that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart will be acceptable before God and you, his people. Today we're talking about this temptation and Jesus' response, prayerful response, as it may be. And uh, I had a little story about temptation. <clears throat> Once four ministers were spending a, a couple of days at a cabin. In the evening, they decided to tell each other their biggest temptation. And the first minister said, well, <clears throat> it's kind of embarrassing, but my big temptation is looking at, you know, p bad pictures. Once I even bought a copy of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Well, my temptation's worse, said the second minister. It's gambling. One Saturday, instead of preparing my sermon, I, I went to the racetrack to bet on the ponies. Well, mine is still worse, said the third minister. I sometimes can't control the urge to drink. 
One time I actually broke into the communion wine. The fourth minister was very quiet, but then finally he said, friends, I, I hate to say this, but my temptation is worst of all. I love to gossip, and if you guys will excuse me, I just need to make a few phone calls. Temptation is something that we sometimes succumb to, but there's a phrase that comes up often around this kind of idea, that which doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And we've all heard that little nugget of wisdom. It's intended to help us get through difficult times. There's a spiritual depth that's made possible as we respond in faith to trials, trouble, temptation, and testing. Even so, if given a choice, most of us will not intentionally choose a path tilled with difficulty. Our prior choices may cause us to stumble onto this path. The choice of others around us may create circumstances that force us onto this path, or we're simply thrown onto the path by disaster or disease. But most of us are slow to deliberately choose the difficult path. Yet in the season of Lent, we're challenged and, and, and invited to embrace this intentional way of life. The 40 days of Lent, for the 40 days of Lent, we follow the example of Jesus, who was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. The Spirit does not just drop him off in the wilderness to fend for himself. The Spirit continues to, continues to abide with him enabling him to grow stronger through this season. In today's scripture that we just read, we see that Jesus' faithfulness to God amidst testing is essential preparation for his mission. Being chosen and anointed is not sufficient preparation either for our Christian walk. There are times that we must be tested, often being led into places of hunger or despair, only then do we learn our dependence on God who graciously provides for all our needs in all the seasons of life. Last week, we looked at the very end of Israel's time in the wilderness. Jesus' sojourn in the wilderness recalls Israel's 40 years of wandering, a point underscored by his repeated quotations from Deuteronomy. In the harsh environment of the wilderness, habits formed by slavery in Egypt are discarded and new ways of complete trust in God are formed. Comparing the testing of Jesus with the testing of Israel in the wilderness, we can see a close parallel, except that Jesus' response is faithfulness. He renders to God the obedience that Israel so often didn't always give. The devil comes with tempting offers, to turn a stone to bread and thus sate his hunger, to worship the devil and gain influence over the world, and to test God's promise in a free fall faith experiment. These Jesus rejects, preferring instead to trust God's word alone. The story is more about the responses Jesus gives to the temptations than the temptations themselves. Jesus' responses underscore his faithfulness to God, his understanding of scripture, and his prayerful life. And this sets the stage for the whole of his ministry and ultimately his sacrifice. His responses come with a full knowledge that obedience to God will be persecution, misunderstanding, and finally the cross. Many followers of Jesus wanted him to free Israel, to restore an earthly kingdom marked by honor and glory. To say yes to the world would have required Jesus to say no to God, the way of God, and to an idea of God's kingdom that those followers at this point simply just didn't understand. It would have required him to say no to the freedom and love for humanity that are marks of his death and resurrection. Jesus is tempted again near the end of his earthly ministry as he prepares himself for betrayal and ultimately execution. Here, Jesus' faithfulness to God's will is fully embraced in his preserving prayers at Gethsemane. He's, he's perseverant in prayer. Now, by contrast, the disciples, like Israel, fail in the time of great trial and testing. Jesus warned them, pray that you may not enter into temptation in Luke 24, 22 rather. Much more was at stake than practicing spiritual discipline on the Mount of Olives in the face of their sorrow, however. Faithfulness to God's mission involved persecution, suffering, and death. Hence, this was a difficult path, not easily embraced. 
Only by joining with Jesus, being in total solidarity with him and his mission, could the disciples grow to ultimately walk the talk. In our own struggles, we may find it easy to resist the temptation to take the easy way out or to glorify ourselves rather than God. Or perhaps we find ourselves tested beyond our strength. The good news, however, is that the one who was tempted in the wilderness is also the one who was crucified and resurrected. The one in whom God's new life is made available to those who cannot, by their own resources alone, withstand temptation. The one who was tempted in the wilderness thus strengthens us in our weakness. You know, many people give up something for Lent. Maybe you've been going without your morning coffee or evening dessert for the past few weeks. Maybe you've sworn off social media or you've unplugged your TV or perhaps you're giving up some of your free time committing to a daily prayer regime as I've been talking about for a few weeks now. Even if we choose a rather difficult discipline, we know that this trial is really minor compared to the 40 days of hunger or the trial or sickness and poverty and loss suffered by so many people around the world. The purpose of this Lenten discipline to look at prayer and fasting and doing good deeds is not merely to experience a, a modicum of Jesus's temptation and pain, but to cultivate in the intentionality and receptiveness to God's grace that enables us to feel the true presence of God in our lives. With this intentionality and openness, we can gain the spiritual depth to be faithful to the mystery of God with us, even in our unexpected trials and temptations. Jesus did not ask for trials and temptations. He accepted that they could not be avoided even by doing God's will. Jesus' season of testing was not just for a day or two. It was not a mere luxury that he had chosen to do without. His season of 40 days of temptation suggests to us that we may have faith fully to endure the seasons of long and protracted difficulty of Jesus' intentionality and receptivity to God to God's grace, and this will show us the way to turn toward God rather than away from God, especially during our trials and temptations. If we choose the Lenten struggle to be intentional and receptive to the grace of God, we will encounter a faithful God who leads not only into the wilderness, but also through the wilderness. Jesus spent a great deal of time in prayer. And if we read through biblical narratives found in the Old and New Testament, we see people doing the very same thing, great amounts of time in prayer. And it's important because five things can happen when we pray. First, prayer internalizes the burden. It deepens our ownership of the burden and our partnership with God. As we pray, we begin to become aware of how God might use us to answer the prayer, how he might involve us in ways we had not therefore seen before. Two, prayer focuses us to wait. Part of prayer is always waiting for God. You know, God has three answers to prayer. Yes, no, and wait. You know, yes and no are kind of no-brainers, but wait, that's a tough one. Instead of getting frustrated that God is not on our schedule, prayer forces us to be on God's timetable. Three, prayer opens our spiritual eyes. It enables us to get in touch with what God is doing and how he's doing it. Prayer opens our eyes, enabling us to see what God is doing, to see things that we're blinded to without prayer. That's because prayer is communication. We speak to God, God answers us, and in speaking to us, he shows us all these things. Four, prayer aligns our heart with God's heart. Adjustment, alignment, setting our thoughts, setting our emotions, setting our actions. And finally, five, prayer enables us to move forward. Prayer engages God and enables God's people and enlarges God's kingdom. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But once we've prayed, we're ready to do anything. Until we've prayed, we can do nothing. But once we've prayed, we can accomplish just about anything. So the question this afternoon when we were thinking about our Lenten journey and Jesus' temptation and Jesus' response, what does your prayer life look like? Are you persistent in prayer? Are your prayers full of passion or are they just boring? Are they filled with intensity and fervor or are they weak and timid, lacking faith? 
What about gratitude? How much time do you spend thanking God for all he's done for you? Think about the people you're praying for. Prayer is important, and one way to get better at it is to do it time and time again. I pray that God blesses you through this message today. Amen. Let's join together now as we sing our closing hymn, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. These Lenten days will take us to the cross of Christ. And so now go forward, knowing that you do not go this way alone. May the word of God strengthen you, the Holy Spirit sustain you, and may God of the Exodus show you the way of true justice and peace. Amen. Well, that's our service for this morning, or now it's just gone noon, a couple of minutes over time. Sorry about that, folks. We we'll hope you're, we get our lunch. I've got my crackers ready for my lunch. I'm hoping to have some soup uh, shortly and uh, carry on with the rest of my day, and hopefully yours too. I'm Reverend Bruce McCanch. This is Burlington East Presbyterian Church's Wednesday Lenten Lunch. Hopefully we'll see you on Sunday and then again next Wednesday. Thanks for joining me today. God bless you. God be with you, and uh, we'll see you soon. Amen. You know someone who wants to watch our online worship services on Sunday mornings, but they've got no internet access. Here at BEPC, that's not a problem at all. You can use a regular home phone to access our online worship services every Sunday morning at 1030. 
All you need to do is call this number, 289-635-4052. And when you connect, enter this access code, 3744. Well, there's one more thing. Once you've connected, please press star 1 to mute your voice. You'll hear better that way. Those numbers again, 289 635 4052, access code 3744. Please don't forget star 1 to mute your voice. For more information, send an email to minister at burlingtoneast.net. See you next Sunday.